Welcome, family. Thank you for tuning in to Living Your Life Without Limits, a show about motivation, inspiration, and elevation. My name is Shannon Jackson, also known as the People's Nurse. And today's topic is discussing peace in the midst of the storm. Stay tuned. Wake up, everybody. Let's elevate your mind. So glad that you're here with us today. This episode is brought to you by our sponsor, Allies of Sobriety and Addiction Recovery. If you are struggling with an addiction, look no further. Allies of Sobriety and Addiction Recovery offers a variety of customized in-home programs tailored to meet your addiction needs. For more information, please check out the link below. And now it's time for Soul Few, which is the Word of God providing spiritual food and comfort to your soul. And today's scripture reading is taken from the New King James Version, Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which pass it all understanding, will guard your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. So we're talking about peace in the midst of the storm. Something that all of us can relate to at one time or another in our lives, where we face difficulties, challenges, stress, feeling chaotic, or could not see a way out. And especially coming out of 2020, going into 2021, many are still recovering from loss, suffering, and new challenges of how they're going to live, and just everyday living. However, the Word of God has promised us that He would give us peace and for us not to let our hearts be troubled. But how do you accomplish that? So here's a couple of key things that I want to leave with you as some simple things as you find your inner peace in the midst of your storm or how to navigate should you be in a storm. And the first one is something very simple. Breathe, taking a breath. Many times we are so busy going and doing, and especially when things are happening, it creates an anxiety and a stress. We begin to hyperventilate, our pacing and our heart rate raises. And something as simple as stopping to breathe and take a pause will bring such a calming, not only to you spiritually, but physically to your bodies. Have you ever been where you just went into a panic attack? I have. Where somebody called me and it was an emergency. They're like, come quick, come quick. And all of a sudden I just started <sighs> just racing, not knowing what was going to happen. And before I would get in the car, I would have to remind myself, breathe. Stop and breathe. Allow peace to settle you. First of all, it's important because you don't want to have an accident. Or you want to think clearly and you can't do that if you can't breathe or you're hyperventilating or you're so stressed out your thoughts are just racing so breathing has a tremendous effect 
a stillness, a calmness. Taking some slow, deep breaths will do wonders. And you can allow God's peace to be able to enter in not only to your body, but into your spirit, into your heart. The next one is visualization. Yes. What did the Bible tell us? Write the vision and make it plain upon tables. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it's going to speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it. Hold on to your vision. See yourself coming out of the storm. Imagine the storm being over and you being victorious. It's important that you have a vision. Sometimes others can have a vision for you, but it's so much more powerful when you see it for yourself. Come into agreement of what the word of God has spoken over your life. Many of you that are watching today, that are listening today, God have promised great things for you. And it shall come to pass at the appointed time. So visualize yourself coming out of the storm. Having that storm roll over. Coming out with victory. Coming out successful. Coming out the head and not the tail. Coming out above and not beneath. Coming out of the bed of affliction. Whatever it might be. Whatever storm you might be in. Challenge, disappointment, or difficulties. Visualize yourself coming out. The next one is having faith, or shall I say, keeping the faith. Having faith in God's word and his promises and faith in yourself and your ability and your skill or the project that you have. The Bible tells us faith is the substance of things hoped for. Evidence of things not seen. Sometimes you don't see it, but it doesn't mean that it's not going to manifest. You have to know within yourself that it's going to come to pass. Especially if you've put the work in. Especially if you've invested the time and the effort. Because the Bible said your gift will make room for you and it'll bring you before great men. So if you put the time in, then have faith that all that you have done, all that you desire, things are going to get better. And maybe it's not just something for you. Maybe you're standing in the gap of somebody else that's going through a storm. Stand not wondering if it's going to happen, hoping it's going to happen, but understand and know it shall happen. This is Mother's Day month, and many mothers, God bless you all, mothers, big mothers, and grandmas, and aunties, and godmothers who have prevailed through the years, standing in the gap for children, loved ones, for their victory. And what a blessing through your faith and trust in God and holding in the gap when you see that loved one come out, when you see that daughter become successful, that son come off of drugs, that person Get healed from that condition. Hold on to your faith during these trying times. You might be in a storm or you might be touching and agreeing with someone who was in a storm. But I want you to hold on to faith and know your faith and trust 
will not make you ashamed. And that the Bible said that all things work together for good for them that love God, for them that are called according to his purpose. So the next one is to focus on the task at hand. Declutter your mind. Sometimes we can get so overwhelmed with so many things to do. Have you ever had the to-do list? And out of the to-do list, you had to make another list to do the to-do list? Well, we can just be so overwhelmed. Our minds can be so crowded. Declutter your mind and your thoughts. What is the most important thing now that you're facing in the midst of this storm? What do you need to do today? Sometimes we focus, we get way over till next week or next month, and we let the spirit of worry and stress and clutter crowd our minds that we can't even focus and produce productivity in a day. Slow down. I've been guilty of that. And it's something I constantly work on. I'm not telling you something just for tips for you, but it's something I'll apply to my own life. It is so necessary, especially when there's a storm or a crisis. You don't want to overwhelm yourself where you begin to have physical ailments and emotionally burnt out. Have you ever felt emotionally burnt out? Just so overwhelmed, you say, I just can't think. I can't think. I, I, I don't know what I need to do. I don't know what, 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 what to do. Just if anybody can help me what to do right now. It's because your mind is too full. And the Bible tells us to cast all our cares upon him. For he cares for you. Do we really do that? Sometimes we do it and we pick it back up. We give it to the Lord. We go to church. We hear the word of God preach. We hear the beautiful singing. We get the message and we shout up a storm and we thank God. And then we go home and we pick it right back up. No. Cast it there and leave it there. And take it one thing at a time. And before you know it, you'll be out of it. Focus on the day. Focus on what you need to do today. The Bible had already told us, give you this day. Don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Focus on the task at hand. And you know when you do that and you finally reach something and you come out, what a reward. What a feeling of fulfillment, satisfaction. I'm out. I'm out. It's done. It's over. I finished it. Have you ever said, how did I come out of that? I don't know. God's grace, his mercy, and you setting priorities and being steadfast in completing that which you had started out to do. So what's the next tip? Take a break. Unwind. Reconnect with yourself. Sometimes we just need to shut it down. Get off social media. Spend some time to reconnect with yourself. Let your mind rest. Allow yourself to renew. Do something to give your mind a break. Rest. Meditate, maybe some quietness, some stillness. Some people love water. Water brings a stillness, a tranquility, a relaxation, a calming. Some people reading the word of God. Some people instrumental music. Some people prayer. Some people meditation, deep breathing. Some people just, guess what? Sleep. Don't underestimate sleep, y'all. Sleep does tremendous amount to regenerate the brain. As a matter of fact, I'm going to do a whole episode about the importance of sleep and the benefits of sleep at a later time. It is totally underrated. 
giving your body and your mind and spirit time to renew. It is so important. I know for me personally, when I just sometimes, when I, when I face a brick wall or block, or I'm just too overwhelmed, when I just stop and take a break, the creativity comes back. The creativity begins again. And where I was stuck in an area, I couldn't figure it out. I don't know what it was. It just, my brain was just overwhelmed. It was too much going on. And when I just took a break from it, left it alone, settled myself, allowed myself to unwind. When I went back to it, I was able to nail it. Don't be afraid to take a break. And it segues me into the last topic and tip for today. Be kind to yourself. Yes, self-care and self-love is what I'm talking about. I cannot emphasize how much this is so important to your own mental health, your own spiritual growth, and your own physical health. And I have to also admit, it took me many, many years to learn how to be kind to myself. I was always kind to other people, always putting other people's needs and desires before mine, always cheering them on and helping them. But I was not that kind to me. And kindness is not conceit. Kindness is not selfishness. Kindness is allowing you to love yourself and take care of yourself. The Bible said you are fearfully and wonderfully made. So God made us and you are beautiful just as you are. But it's up to us to take care of these bodies, our spirits, and our minds during our space here on earth. So I want you to make sure you are kind to yourself. Because especially when there's a storm or crisis that's happening, we tend to neglect us because we're so busy in the middle of dealing with what the storm is, we forget to bring that love back to us. So make sure every day you take some moments to be kind to yourself. Whether it's stealing a few moments by yourself, whether it's a long bubble bath or something that will bring joy and renewal and make you feel self-love. Even if you got to quote it to yourself and say, I love me because God made me. I'm fearfully and beautifully made. Speak life over yourself, not defeat. I used to tell a lot of people in classes that I teach, sometimes you have to change your lens in how you see yourself. Because how you see yourself should be how the word of God sees you and what God has promised for your life, not what society says about you. And oftentimes we allow others' opinion of us to define who we are and therefore we begin to neglect ourselves or abuse ourselves or alter ourselves to their opinion of us. But I want you to understand that you deserve to treat yourself with kindness. And that will differ from each person. But all I'm saying about that is having self-love and doing something to allow your mind and body and spirits to feel good, feel love, appreciate it, and receive the promises of God over your life and into your life. And when you're being kind, you're taking that energy, you're taking that momentum, 
You're taking that and you're depositing it in you and you're going to be able to actually do more and give out because you know how to love yourself. And the Bible said charity begins at home, then spreads abroad, not just at home in your household and in your environment. It starts with you loving you. Then you can give it out to other people. So I hope that these lessons or tips will be helpful for you. How to have peace in the midst of the storm. Because the Bible have already told us to let not your heart be troubled. And another verse of scripture said, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, will keep your hearts and minds. So at this time, we're going to take a commercial break. And when we come back, we're going to go to a segment that's called Chat and Facts. Stay with us. Hey, fam. This is your resident host, Shannon Jackson, with Living Your Life Without Limits. You know, in one of our Street Love episodes, actually in the city of Watts, we had given out 50 wellness boxes to that community. And they were such a big success and people loved them so much, I decided to make them available to everyone. And if you are in need of a special gift for the holidays or even going into the new year, you will want to give this wellness box out. So as I unbox and tell you some of the items in here, stay tuned and take a look. You will see it says you deserve the gift of wellness, me time. It's all about you, or all about whoever you're gonna give the box to. So here are some of the items that are in the box. First, you have a blood pressure risk band so that you can continue to monitor your blood pressure. And to complement that, I've given you a magnet on how to categorize your blood pressure so that you'll know what's normal, what's elevated, and what's high. Many people don't know the difference, and it's very, very important that you know the difference and went to seek medical attention. Everyone is into checking temperatures. You can't go anywhere without checking them. So you'll have your very own Living Your Life Without Limits thermometer, and I've also given you a couple of covers as well that you can use. First aid kit. So inside the box, you have access to a library of guided meditation we need time to relax our minds and decompress from life. So you'll find that there, and in addition to that, you can use the candle to just light it and relax and release. One of my favorite items in the box is the Wellness Journal. This comes from the heart. I put a lot of thought into putting this together because I designed it with you in mind as well as myself and reaching daily wellness goals. So you just have to see what's in here. I'm so excited about this wellness journal because it's not like any other journal. It really has some key nuggets in here to help you in your daily wellness journey. Okay, we're back, family. Thank you for staying with us for our final segment called Chat and Facts, where you, the viewers and listening audience, can email us your questions at info at living your life without limits. Or if you happen to be watching this on YouTube, you can drop a question in the comments section. Each week, we will select one of the questions and provide you the answers on air. And for your participation, you will also be entered into a free Living Your Life Without Limits monthly drawing with a chance to win a free gift. Okay, so here's our question for today. This question comes from Catherine from North Hollywood, California. I had a stroke about six months ago. Although I am feeling better, I'm always worried if I am at risk for another stroke. So I don't want to alarm Catherine, but I do want to give you facts. 
And the fact is, according to the American Stroke Association, one in four strokes and heart attack survivors are at risk for having another stroke. Up to 80% of strokes and heart attacks, though, may be prevented, which is the good news, Ms. Catherine, and everyone else that may be listening, with a combination of medication, managing your blood pressure, comorbidities, and making healthy lifestyle changes. So to help you with this, I've also included information directly from the American Stroke Association. And if you'd like to learn more information about this subject matter, feel free to visit us on Living Your Life Without Limits, where you can also download the same information for your review. Well, that's all that we have for today. I hope you enjoyed our subject, Peace in the Midst of the Storm. And remember those key steps or lessons to help you to maintain your peace if you're going through a storm or coming out of one. So our time has ran out for today, family. I was so excited to be here with you today. And I hope you got some information, some nuggets to help you with peace in the midst of the storm. If you want to know more about living your life without limits, visit us on our website and also leave us a comment or drop us an email. And as I always end, remember to love yourself, take care of yourself, because guess what? You are absolutely worth it. Thank you for joining us. your mind.